Pilate has soldiers with swords. Jesus has the peasant community with palm branches and laying their cloaks out on the street. And they're singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Where is the power structure? Not in the war horses. Not in the chariots. It's in the power of vulnerability. Of love. Of inclusion. Of saying something to power that can never be taken away. You can't kill love. That's what the gospel says. You cannot kill the spirit of love that bubbles up from people that have been pushed down. Not that they would amass some power and then just take over and just repeat the pyramid structure, but instead following the way of Jesus. This is poor people yearning for liberation and lining up these pathways. I was not when I heard this story, and Jesus says, Go ahead, me, and you're going to find this person who's got a donkey, and you're supposed to take it and say, The Lord has need of it. That it was like some Jesus telling the future thing. No. What makes more sense to me now is that this is setting up a public action in the midst of an oppressed time where it's dangerous to set up a public action. You can't ask for a permit to run this parade. So he sets it up. So when he hears the key phrase, the Lord has need of it, that's his first signal to go, oh yeah, it's on. That's what's going on in the story. Jesus is changing and subverting the structure of the Roman Empire that's coming in the other way. Jesus is bearing witness to a different type of power. It's a power of courageous witness, of solidarity with the oppressed. It's a power of public, vulnerable love. It's the same power that was used by the early church when they would then welcome in the people who were uh, excluded from the rest of the community, people who were sick, people who were outcast, people who were different, people who were considered not part of the rest of the Roman Empire and the civilized world, that church was the one that welcomed them in. You know that hospitals are called hospitals because of the hospitality shown in the first three centuries of the Christian community, saying, we'll take your sick, we'll take care of these people, we're going to love them and make a community of them. Siblings and friends are being led back into that same time right now. Jesus is leading us back into a time in which it's going to be our hospitality and our inclusion that will define us. Can we love beyond all of our labels and all of our uh, identifications? Can we love literally everybody who comes into this school? That's going to be the secret for us. This is the same action, the same power that was used by Gandhi. He called it such a riot which means soul groups. That you're going to appeal to the conscience and the humanity of your oppressor. You're not going to try and just conquer them with, with political power. You're going to conquer them with love, soul groups. So that, you know, as, as Dr. King said, the only way you can really defeat an enemy is to make them your friend. And so he believed that this was, he studied Gandhi's power, and so he employed that in the civil rights movement. And he would then walk and bear witness to what was happening in our country at the time, and still is to this day. This is the power that is being used by Greta Thunberg to speak out about what's happening to our planet. This is the power that is behind the Black Lives Movement, the Black Lives Matter movement. It's speaking out and saying, I mean, think about it, it's a perfect slogan for my view. Black Lives Matter. How do you argue that thing? Right? I mean, it's not saying black lives are better, or black lives are more important. It's saying that they matter, and that their lives matter and should matter. They matter to God, so they need to matter to God's people. Amen? Yeah. True victory is not found in domination or intimidation, but it's found in inclusive love that appeals to the humanity of the enemy and changes them into a symbol, into a beloved friend. This is the Pax Christ as opposed to the Pax Roman. The peace of Christ that we just shared a minute ago. It's about saying to anybody who you see, hello, I see you. And you're welcome here. But I am welcome. This, by the way, is how we are saved. How we're made whole. God demonstrates this to us. God doesn't save us by domination, or by coercion, or by threat, but by sacrificial love, forgiveness, and then the gift of God's Spirit. You know what that does with us when we mess up and we become, in many ways, uh, enemies to the things that God cares about? God forgives us and invests in us. That's what God does. God so decides, I, I get it, that you're messing up, but I'm not going to cast you out. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm instead going to love you back into your right self. That 
forgives our brokenness, God restores our life and invests in us, and then sends us out to love, serve, forgive, restore, and invest in other people, especially the people who have been uh, devalued in the world. God's plan is never vengeance, but it's the way of the cross. It's the empty tomb. It's healing and not revenge. This is why the table right here and not a cannon or a national flag is the central symbol of a Christian community. It's a table, a place of eating together. On this coming Thursday, Monday, Thursday, we're going to hear about Jesus' witness to the importance of table fellowship. On that day, Jesus is his last night to be with his disciples. He has one last chance to get all of his stuff into his boat. He knows that it's his last uh, free time to be able to see. And what does he do? They're arguing about which one of them is the greatest. He puts on a towel, and he goes and gets a basin of water, and he washes their feet. And then he opens up the table, and he breaks bread, and he shares it up, and he says, this is me, and this is my life energy that's given for you. He does this with Judas sitting right next. He does this with Peter, who's going to deny him that very evening, sitting at the same table. He doesn't ever say, this is the table for the ones who get it. This is the table for the ones who understand. He says, this 